is one section down, four to go. Are we ready? I think we're going to have to pick up the pace a little bit here, guys. Um, so, Tim, bringing on you to talk about energy and waste. And this isn't your first year at Arup, is it? I think it's fair to say. I'd love to know a little bit more about your history and the department that you work with in Arup um, before we move on to talk about energy and water. That was a schoolboy error. Uh, <laughs> for not my first Zoom, I didn't unmute myself. So, um, yeah, you're right. I have been at Arup for a while. Um, and I'm a structural engineer by profession. And um, I've been working in the media sector um, for uh, a good 15 years now, starting with Sky Studios out at Osterley. Uh, and working with other companies like Bloomberg, BBC, Ericsson, Red B and uh, Pinewood Studios over the years. Um, so yeah, it's been a really uh, interesting sector for me to work in because of the ability to get really into the kind of functional thinking of the studios and the clients because they, they know how they want to use the buildings. Uh, so they tend to give pretty good briefs to us as designers for what they want. Um, so yeah, it's been really, yeah, it was great when you contacted us, Aaron, and asked if we could help look at sustainability in the sector. Uh, and it was a real no brainer to say, yes, we'd love to have a go. Good start. Uh, and <laughs> put all that experience, put all that experience to good use. Definitely. Uh, I mean, thank you. I mean, we, it's been, it's been really fun working together, um, I have to say. Coming back to the topic, you know, we know energy is a major contributor, 30% of the carbon footprint of temple production, as we've heard at the start. Can you talk us through the current issues and, and why they exist? Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, in terms of operational energy, uh, I guess a lot of it is to do with uh, diesel uh, and the reliance on generators. Um, but, you know, there are some kind of functional um, systemic comments to make as well. Uh, there's a big push domestically for us all to get smart meters installed from our energy companies so that we know how much energy we're using. Uh, obviously, um, in a lot of commercial setups like studio buildings, they charge the productions at a flat rate for energy use. So um, there's not so much transparency around consumption and utility costs. Uh, whereas in America, it tends to be a little bit more joined up. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, there, there's a tends to be a big reliance on diesel generators. People are a bit paranoid about losing time on shoots uh, if energy may not be that reliable. Um, uh, and also, a lot of studios are, have, are dealing with how to upgrade aging infrastructure without losing production time. Um, so sometimes these kind of upgrades and passive solutions can be perceived as being disruptive to the ongoing operations of the studios. Uh, so those are some of the current challenges. Um, and, and in the report, we look at them in three sections, sort of energy demand reduction, um, sustainable energy sources, uh, and also water reduction demand. You may not believe it in the UK, famous for its drizzle, rain and grey skies, but actually water um, scarcity is in many parts of the UK a problem, uh, and as it is in other parts of the world. So if we're talking about energy demand reduction, um, we're talking about efficient buildings, uh, which actually could be fairly easy win because there's a synergy and an overlap we find in design between thermal efficiency of the walls for uh, reducing heating demand and also the need for sound absorption and acoustics. Uh, it's essentially the same mineral wall product. So uh, high insulation buildings uh, will hopefully be good acoustic performing buildings as well. Uh, a big energy use in film production is the lighting. And if people and the move towards LED lighting is going to make a huge difference in terms of reducing the energy demand. And if we can get the energy demand of productions down, and if the studios and the productions can communicate on the energy that's being used, and um, 
then we can start to reduce that demand, which starts to make sustainable energy sources able to make a bigger contribution. So that's the second sector we looked at. Um, and the idea, obviously, that film studios tend to have big roofs, which could be the perfect place to park your photovoltaic array. Um, or in the case of Pinewood, we put, uh, we put gardens on the roofs, but that's, uh, that's more to do, that's a landscape and, and the ecology story, which we'll come to in one of the later sections. Um, so one of the big issues, of course, that leads to generator design is about reliability. And are you going to be filming when it's sunny enough to be running your studios off photovoltaic arrays? Uh, and this is, a, this is a key kind of question. And we've been grappling with this on the new Elstree studios. Uh, and whether you're looking at a net zero idea where you're generating energy when you can and pumping it into the grid and then bring the energy back later. So it's a kind of system size uh, consideration or whether we're talking about on-site batteries and going down the kind of Tesla Studios type thinking. Um, so in terms of critical design requirements, uh, we're talking about passive design of buildings. A lot of that's driven by regulation for modern buildings have to be energy efficient. Um, but also we look very much with studio clients about how much of the time the studios are being used for shooting and how much is set up and strike time. And obviously during the setup, set build, rehearsal, you have the chance to have natural ventilation, maybe natural daylight, all kinds of stuff that uh, maybe would be considered intrusive to the final shoot. Um, green infrastructure, I mentioned the Pinewood example with the green roofs and lots of greenery and ecology around the site. This can help with reducing uh, um, heat island problems, uh, which is the heat build up locally around the buildings due to their energy use. Um, and uh, and that, would, uh, that would reduce the amount of potentially cooling uh, or heating that is required in the buildings. So that then makes the renewable energy sources more um, giving you better bang for your buck, I suppose. Um, so water, if we talk about water, um, there are again, big roofs, lots of hard standing for um, base camp and OB support vehicles and all that kind of stuff. So water recycling, catching that water and reusing it that can make a huge difference to the overall water impact of the studio facility. Um, uh, and we're putting it pretty bluntly here about banning diesel generators. So there's other kinds of generators that are coming onto the market um, or biodiesel or less impactful than diesel generators. But diesel was a big, uh, big number that came up in our data uh, that can be addressed and needs to be addressed. Um, and, and reducing reliance on diesel generators comes from having reliable permanent grid connections across the studios and popular filming locations. If you can guarantee enough energy that you don't need generators, then people won't need to use them. Cool. Thank you so much. I mean, this this uh, this conversation is obviously clearly convened around the intersection between production and the facilities, studio facilities themselves. This section is clearly very beyond the the control of a um, of a producer um, and yeah and, and production and the changes that we can make, despite the fact it's it's using up, um, you know, contributing thirty percent of our our our, our footprint. Um, Pippa, to bring you back in here, you know, we said before that some things are in the gift of producer. This, this clearly isn't. Um, but if you're going to get a studio to change its energy contract for the purposes of your film, what, what is the role of a producer in, in, in this kind of complex arena? Uh, well, I think it's to keep pushing the studios to do the right thing. You know, I think we all think that they need to be much greener. You know, we all want there to be electric vehicle points. There aren't any, as far as I'm aware, or there are very, very few. Um, you know, we all want them to be buying their electricity from sustainable sources. And I think we have to, as producers, ask them about, you know, do they know about this report? Do they know <clears throat> about the Screen New Deal? Uh, and and keep, keep asking the questions and keep pushing because, uh, you know, they need to be 
they need to be drawing us to them by their good practice and it will become you know a business decision for them and actually it will probably save them money in the long run um, and it'll certainly save productions money it's, it's totally nonsensical that you know each production gears up separately with its own set of washing machines its own set of generators etc cetera, etc cetera, mm -hmm. and then just gears back down again that should be something that's there as permanent infrastructure so we're not expecting producers to hold all the 60 pages in their head uh, all the time. Is it okay just to, for, for producers to ask studios, are they supporting a, sc a Screen New Deal in essence? Is yeah. that realistic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't cool. see what's up. <laughs> I hope so. 